In this lecture, you'll learn about RIP, the routing information protocol. RIP is a distance vector routing protocol. We spoke earlier about the difference between distance vector and link state routing protocols. So you know that it's distance vector, so it's going to be using routing by rumor. It uses hop count as its metric. So let's say that router 1 wants to get to the 10.1.0.0 network and to get there it needs to go via R2, R3 and R4 then that network would be three hops away. A hop is a router that the traffic has to go through to get to that final destination. The maximum hop count is 15, so there's a bit of a scalability limitation with RIP, so it's not really used except in lab or demo environments. It will perform equal cost multipath up to four equal cost paths by default. We're currently on RIP version 2. Before that, obviously, was RIP version 1. RIP version 1 is a legacy protocol, which is typically not used at all anymore. RIP version 2 isn't used very often. RIP version 1 really isn't used at all anymore, although it is still supported on Cisco routers. RIP version 1 had limitations even worse than we have with RIP version 2. It doesn't send subnet mask information with routing updates, so variable length subnet masks, VLSM, is not supported. Now, you don't have to use classful networks with RIP version 1. For example, all of your networks could be a slash 28, and that would work just fine as long as they're all slash 28. But you couldn't have some slash 24, some slash 28, and some slash 30, for example. They all have to be the same. RIP version 2 does support VLSM. RIP version 1 updates are sent every 30 seconds as broadcast traffic. So everything that gets hit by the traffic in that subnet has to process it. RIP version 2 uses multicast address 224.0.0.9, so it's more efficient than RIP version 1 is. And RIP version 2 supports authentication. RIP version 1 does not. With authentication, we can put a password on the router on both sides of the link, so they will not form an adjacency unless they both have the same matching password. It gives us some better security. Authentication is supported in all the modern routing protocols. It's not covered on the CCNA exam though. We also have RIPNG as well as RIP version 1 and RIP version 2. RIPNG is RIP next generation that supports IPv6 networks. It's not covered on the CCNA exam, so for the current version of CCNA, you really only need to know RIP version 2. To configure RIP, pretty simple. At global config, we say router RIP. And then optionally, we're going to say version 2. We do want it to be running the latest version. And then to specify the interfaces that you want RIP to be running on and to be advertised, we use the network command. So in this example, we've said network 10.0.0.0. All interfaces that begin with 10 will start sending out RIP hello messages and trying to form an adjacency. When they do form a peering relationship with a router on the other side of the link, they will advertise all of the 10 networks to that router. The network command should reference a classful network and no subnet mask is specified. So for example, if on the router we had an interface with IP address, 10.1.1.1 slash 24, we don't say network 10.1.1.0, we say network 10.0.0.0. RIP will automatically summarize routes to the classful boundary by default. For example, if you've got an interface with IP address 192.168.10.1 slash 30, and under RIP you include that with a network statement, it will be advertised as 192.168.10.0 slash 24. 
because any address that begins with 192 is a class C address, which has got a default mask of slash 24. So in our example, rather than advertising it as a slash 30, it will summarize it to a slash 24. If we had an interface with IP address 172.16.10.1 slash 30, that would be advertised as 172.16.0.0 slash 16, because that's a class B address and it would default to a slash 16. That is almost never desirable, unless by some magical coincidence your network, the summarization does fall exactly in the classical boundaries, in which case it would be fine. Your network, modern real networks aren't designed that they all fall, the summarization ranges exactly on classical boundaries. So if you leave auto summary turned on, it's liable to cause havoc on your network, possibly black holing, dropping some of your traffic. So we always disable auto summary. To do that, the command is router rip and then no auto summary. So we don't want to do the automatic summarization, but we probably still will want to do summarization manually. To do that, the command is IP summary address. So we would do this to get control of exactly how we are summarizing. When we do this, the individual summarized routes that fall within the larger range are not going to be advertised, only the summary route. So on the neighbor router that learns the route, it's not going to learn all those different individual routes. It will only learn the summary route. So it's more efficient. It takes up less memory. It also compartmentalizes the different parts of your network. So if you have an outage anywhere, it's going to limit the impact that that has network wide. So to configure this, well, looking at an example here, on router R2, you see that all of the 10.1 networks are over to the left, our interface fast 1 slash 0. All of the 10.0 networks are over to the right, our interface fast 0 slash 0 on router R2. So what we're going to do in the example is R2 is going to advertise all of the 10.0 networks to R3 as a single summary route. So rather than advertising 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and 10.0.1.0 slash 24 and 10.0.2.0 slash 24, it's just going to advertise 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So R3 is only going to learn that one summary route rather than the three individual slash 24 routes. So we configure this at the interface level and you can Configure it on the interface that you're sending the summary route out of. So all of the 10.0 networks are available out interface fast 0 slash 0, but we're going to advertise that to R3 out interface fast 1 slash 0. So we configure this on interface fast 1 slash 0, the interface we're sending the summary route out of. And then to configure the summary, we say IP summary address rip. 10.0.0.0 and then the subnet mask 255.255.0.0 so it will just send that one route of 10.0.0.0 slash 16 to router r3 to be honest though rip is only used in really small networks or for labs or for demos. So your network's probably not going to be that big that you're going to care too much about summarization anyway. To verify rip to verify any routing protocol that we've got running on a router, we can say show IP protocols. So we've done that in the example here, and we can see that the routing protocol is RIP. RIP is running. I can also see the interfaces that RIP is running on. So it's running on fast 0 slash 0, 1 slash 0, 2 slash 0, and 3 slash 0. And I must have just put this command in not long after configuring it because it's only sent and received one, sorry, two updates on those interfaces. I can see it will do equal cost to load balancing up to four maximum paths. It's routing for the 10.0.0.0 network and it's got neighbors routing information sources at 10.0.0.2 and 10.0.3.2. And the distance is the administrative distance, which defaults to 124. For RIP. If I wanted to see my RIP configuration, I can do a show run and then pipe and then section RIP. Rather than doing a show run and having to scroll through the whole config to the RIP section, this will show me just the RIP command, so it's quite convenient. 
and once I've configured RIP, I'm going to want to check that I do have RIP routes in the routing table. So my standard command for that is show IP route. In the example here, I can see that I've got four routes that were learned via RIP. I can see that by on the column on the left, it says R, means they were learned by RIP. And I can see that the administrative distance is 120. And then I've got the slash. After that is the metric. That is how many hop counts that destination network is away. The next hop address when I received the last update and the outgoing interface. And finally, I can also check the RIP database. What this is useful for is if you've configured RIP, and then you can see that you've got RIP neighbors, but you look in the routing table and you're not seeing the expected routes in there. Well, maybe the, the routes weren't even received at all. So the way that you can check that is with the show IP RIP database. Or maybe the routes were received, but they're not the best route. So to check if the routes were received at all by RIP, whether or not they made it into the routing table or not, we can do a show IP RIP database. Next thing to cover here is default route injection. This is where we have got a default static route for all traffic, probably going out to the internet. And we don't want to have to configure a default static route on every single router. So what we'll do is on the final outbound router, which is connected out to the internet, we will configure a default static route there and we will then advertise it, inject it into RIP so all of our other internal routers will learn about it automatically. Saves us having to do a static route for it on every single router in the organization. So in the example here, it's R4 that is connected to the internet. So on R4, I say IP route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, so it's a default static route with a next hop address of 203.0.113.2. I then want to inject that into RIP, so I say router RIP and default information originate. So that default static route will be injected into RIP and it will be advertised to R3 and R5 from R4 and then they will advertise it on further inbound into my other internal RIP routers. If I now do a show IP route, so this is on R1. If I go back to the topology diagram, you see that R1 is all the way over on the right. It will have learned this because I configured it on R4. And on R1, I do have a RIP route for 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0, so it's a default static route. The administrative distance is 120 because it's RIP. The hop count is 2, and I can see that my next hop address is 10.0.3.2, out interface fast ethernet 3 slash 0. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.